I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Monday, March the 28th, brought to you in part by Joplin Regional Stockyards. Don't forget Joplin's special cowing bull sale coming up here April the 6th, which is uh, right around the corner right here. And uh, you can always count on Joplin on Mondays to have a good selection of, of cattle, and especially light cattle, grazing cattle for you guys that are looking for some still and uh, a lot of them will have a, a tick of that continental in them to really give them that explosive uh, grow when they get out there on grass and go to grazing but uh, check out joplinstockyards.com on their website for all the different programs that Joplin has going even fewer cattle and you guys are expecting me to give you the results of the cattle on feed report which I am and uh, you're gonna say well you're just looking at the glass half full I am but that's kind of the response I got from several people that I talked to and respect in the industry whenever we got the results of the cattle on feed report on Friday and it showed that the placements were significantly higher than what the average of the analyst guess were so yes that's a, that's a bearish signal but uh, I tell you what we are short of cattle and do not let higher placements make you think that we've got more cattle we've got a lot less cattle and uh, most of us think that our numbers are much tighter than what the inventory reports released by the government have shown uh, we have we have flat liquidated these cows uh, and not just uh, the last six months I mean the last two or three years and uh, there's there's a great demand for for uh, ground beef and and the kind of cuts that they get out of cows uh, you know a lot of the a lot of the world depended on Australia uh, to get their, their kind of brush cattle uh, not you know not your high choice cuts or anything like that but just beef uh, to make different uh, meals out of uh, on the other side of the globe well Australia went through you know a, a, a lifetime drought their 100 year drought and uh, if you think that uh, numbers uh, can't get really tight, look at Australia right now. Well, they don't have any availability, and what they do is so expensive, nobody can afford it. That is one of the reasons that we've got such good demand for our cow and bull meat. Well, when cows are bringing, uh, you know, 90 cents and bulls are bringing a dollar and a quarter, uh, a lot of guys would rather just go ahead and shuck them rather than give them another year especially when they're short of grass uh, due to dry conditions and things like that but uh, this has been going on uh, for quite a while we are extremely short of cattle so the fact that that we placed a full three percent more on feed uh, in in February than what we thought or what uh, the analysts thought that just means there's fewer cattle out there left to sell and these numbers are going to get tight and people are realizing it already uh, the auction receipts are drying up very, very fast. Uh, guys are, are calling in to, uh, to big shippers uh, in, in uh, places where they, they cover a lot of small sales and put numbers together, looking for cattle to turn out. Uh, and, and I think we are going to get some moisture. Uh, it's, it's starting to pop up now and then, just right on cue here, as we get close to April, and, and April's uh, the month when we see rain when we're going to get it and uh, when we really have to have it going into the summer but uh, I think we are going to get some we, we've started getting some even in some real dry conditions in the southern plains uh, the central part of the US there and, and we're in our big grazing areas is getting some decent moisture and the northern plains uh, they've had some snows up there but uh, they still need something uh, up there in that uh, South Dakota eastern Montana region that has been so hard hit there and, and uh, just no cattle there those cattle were all sold months and months ago as peewees you're not going to see any numbers come out of that country but you look at that cattle on feed report that was released on Friday on feed numbers for March the 1st come in uh, just about where they thought 101.4 slightly higher due to the placements compared to 101.1 which was the average of the analyst guess Placements of feeders come in at 109.3. You got to remember that cold blast that happened a year ago, February, and a lot of your cell barns were shut down for multiple weeks, and that's uh, the main reason for that. Uh, but that 109.3 compares to the guess of 106.3, so a full three percentage points. Yeah, that's bearish. But uh, uh, like I said, there's no cattle left. 
marketings uh, of fat cattle in February 104.9 which was uh, bullish compared to the 104.3 uh, no word on the number of those placements that were actually cows uh, that, that people that, that were in the know and knew how short our cow numbers were going to be and how good the demand was going to be started putting those cows on feed uh, but uh, you know the, these are real rough estimates and, and even the cattle on feed report results are rough estimates so you got to keep that in mind too but you look at the breakdown of placements in the, in the major states uh, Kansas, Texas and Nebraska placements were all up 13 percent compared to the same month a year ago so it's significant and there just there was no cattle moving a year ago February because it, it, you know because of the frigid frigid cold weather there and just weren't many cattle showing up for sale and those that were already bought couldn't be delivered uh, but you go up in Iowa which that was the furthest out from that uh, worst uh, of, the, of, the, of the frigid uh, of course they're used to it they were they were down five percent but uh, the weights on the placements just kind of varied they were fairly spread out so uh, we shouldn't see a, a big um, change in that uh, I want to talk to you about something uh, that's sad and close to my heart uh, uh, the industry lost a giant on Friday evening uh, with the passing of Bob Foote Bob Foote was a legend and will always be a legend in the cattle feeding industry. Uh, he was a friend of mine. I got to sit with him or, or sit close to him there at the St. Joe Stockyards. It's, it's a pretty close uh, venue there. He was actually a few rows down from me, but uh, I, I learned a lot from overhearing him and, and it was impossible not to overhear Bob Foote because he learned how to whisper in a sawmill but uh you know listening and, and through the day hearing his big baritone laugh come out i saw him at least once a week at st joe stockyards uh for about the 16 years that i was there i would see him at other sales when i traveled around the state of missouri with my job with usda but uh i always appreciated the way that he treated me uh even when i was just a lowly market reporter which I'm still just a lowly market reporter, but uh, I got a little bigger venue here. But uh, he he was uh, he was uh, the old school, and I know the family will understand that I mean that uh, as a term of endearment. An old school cattle feeder. That's the way he did things. He he supported the sale barns. He supported producers. A lot of producers that took their cattle to the sale barns in the Midwest. They were producing cattle for Bob Foot the kind that he wanted and uh, he, he, um, he was just uh, 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 kind of a guy that we don't see anymore they broke the mold on him uh, you know he was all about the performance of the cattle and uh, you know and now it now it's all about uh, risk management and, and uh, management schemes and contracts and deals and all this kind of stuff which I know he was not a fan of but he was a top 10 cattle feeder that's in an in a, in a atmosphere that's completely dominated by corporates independent cattle feeder top 10 so you think about it, he owned feedlots in Nebraska and all across Kansas uh, you know I mean he was he was active in the, in the sales he he loved the, his family uh, he loved Kansas State University he loved the Royals and the Chiefs and he loved green yearlings uh, with a lot of condition uh, and, and a fair way up. Uh, they didn't have to have diamonds in their ass or anything like that, but if they were performance type cattle, he was on them and he bought a world of cattle and it wasn't always roses. He went through the hard times. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, just talking to him and seeing him weekly, you know, uh, I, I watched him buying cattle, just inhaling them, knowing that the cattle were going to lose two to three hundred dollars a head, just the way the markets were. But uh, you know, he had a lot of great one-liners. But one of my favorites was uh, uh, they were asking him. You know, he was just buying those cattle and knowing all the well that they were not going to work. Uh, they asked him about why he kept doing it, and he says, he says, I, I own feedlots. Feedlots are like hotels. You can't run hotels with empty rooms, and I can't run feedlots with empty pens. And you just think about that. That, that was a words of wisdom from, from Bob Foote. But uh, he, like I said, he was a giant of the industry, will forever be remembered. Uh, he's left it in good hands. 
with his boys there, uh, each one of them doing an integral part to, of that business. And, and I've been rest assured by Greg Foote that he's taught them well and they are going to continue on uh, in a similar fashion that Bob, uh, Bob Foote uh, led them to be. But uh, just watching him over the years, you could learn a lot. And just uh, watching him and talking to him and visiting with him, uh, he was a guy that had nerves of steel, ice water in his veins, and balls like boulders. So you guys remember Bob Foote and his family and friends here. I'm going to be asking you guys here shortly uh, as we start this week and we start seeing what's happening with this uh, uh, Grassley Fisher bill compromise and, and don't uh, read everything you hear guys. It is the only thing out there that we can achieve and, and it hasn't been easy to, to try to get this deal to come to fruit and I haven't seen it yet so I can't absolutely swear to it but if this deal comes out I'm going to ask you to, to rattle the chain of your lawmakers and I really really want you to do it guys I, I think it could uh, indeed save this industry but we'll see what happens this week if everything comes together like we're hoping let's talk about the board uh, for last week April live cattle futures Monday was down 45 cents Tuesday was down 62 Wednesday was steady Thursday up a quarter Friday up 80 cents your April live cattle futures ended the week at 140.47 down just three cents for the week June ended the week at 137.37 actually up 30 cents for the week March feeder cattle Monday was down 90 Tuesday up 22 Wednesday took the 22 cents away Thursday was up 67 Friday down 35 with March feeder cattle ending the week at 156.42 down just 58 cents for the week April ending at 161.57, down 75 cents for the week. Your corn uh, futures uh, were uh, ended the week up 12 and a quarter cent for the week at 754 bushel. Beans up 42 and a quarter cent at 1710 and a quarter. Kansas City hard red winter wheat up 40 and a quarter cent at 1110 and three four cent a bushel. Fat cattle trade up through Thursday had improved uh, uh, volume there at 74,600 head and you may not believe it but the weighted averages on live cattle are higher. Why was that? Because they got more uh, up in the northern plains and you know we felt like the southern plains was steady to kind of weak and it was mostly at 138. Nebraska sold some cattle at 138 but uh, these packers have been telling you are short of cattle and there was a lot of 142 late in the week and that was far enough away from 138 that it pulled the weighted averages up but 138 to 142 is what cattle brought in a five area feeding region on a direct basis that was one to two dollars higher just on the on the trend and uh, so far up through Thursday up 41 cents but on Friday uh, your, your weighted average was 139.68 which was higher than the 138.96 that they had averaged through the whole week but on Thursday's uh, trade it was quite a bit better but still uh, the weighted average for the whole week up through Thursday was uh, uh, over 40 cents higher than it was the previous week so uh, it's, it, it was a tick better uh, hence the increased volume uh, your dress trade was about steady and not a lot of dress sales 220 to 225 weighted average through Thursday was 220.45 that was down about 40 cents Friday a little bit of trade not much Iowa about 500 head 23,500 for the week live sales in Iowa on Friday 139 dress sales 222 Nebraska only about 300 head a little over 30,000 for the week a few live sales at 138 few dressed at 221. Kansas had about 1,300 on Friday, 17,000 for the week, 138. No trade in Texas on Friday. Box beef cutout values have indeed turned the corner and they are seasonally heading higher as we get closer to grilling season here. Um, your weighted average for all of last week's trades on choice cuts, 26102 up 369 compared to the previous week's weighted average. Dress sales 250 247 up $2.40. Your late Friday quotes on box beef was a, a tick higher, less than a dollar, but higher on your choice and just a few pennies lower on select cuts. But choice select spread on your weighted average was over eight and a half dollars. 
uh, just a, a less than moderate trade at 534 loads but you, you can't really judge that they put so much of it out front and in contracts uh, you know, box beef cutout value quotes are actually thinner than, than our, our negotiated trade that's reported your slaughter uh, for last week 659,000 that's very impressive better than what we thought because we've been falling off so bad here of late uh, at the end of the week but 114,000 on Friday was maybe a bit better than we expected and a decent Saturday of 57,000 but that 659,000 was 15,000 more than last week 10,000 more than the same week a year ago uh, talk about what else is going on that Texas land sale is uh, is they're still taking bids and you you uh, email a bid in and you guys that say you can't email if you got a chance of buying 1100 acres uh, you can find somebody that can John McDowell 55 at gmail.com but uh, about uh, 800 acres of uh, tillable land there and the balance of it is uh, native pasture but uh, sits there close to Pampa, Texas, that's the top of Texas in the northern panhandle there, wouldn't be a bad place to have some ground. But uh, get those in, you got uh, less than 30 days to do that. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction, brought to you by Margin Tracks by Midcon. Ended the week at 154.87, that was down 71 cents from uh, Thursday's close there. Uh, but in your sales, cash feeders for the week, unevenly steady to two dollars higher now, I realize your your real-time index which is a seven-day moving average was a tick lower but you know when you're talking about a seven-day moving average and you got higher prices falling off the other end that's one reason it's down but uh, your sell barns were pretty decent uh, we've got lighter receipts uh, and uh, as we continue to see that it's going to take fewer cattle to draw a crowd and and the market's going to improve on them Calves and stalkers are still enjoying uh, green grass fever, which the green grass hadn't quite gotten here yet, but uh, uh, they're, 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 they're uh, getting ready for it, but still firm to spots as much as 10 bucks higher on calves and stalkers as people are finishing up their, their grazing cattle purchases there. Let's talk about a uh, big sale on Friday, Burwell, Nebraska, 1,700 head of feeders, and you think, well, that's not that big. It's pretty good size for, for these days, guys. Not many cattle left out there. But uh, no recent comparison there. But uh, you look at these, uh, these quotes right here, kind of some middleweight cattle for Burwell, Nebraska. And I'll tell you, those two center long strings there were natural cattle. The 105 that weighed 671 at 189, which is a premium. And 109 head of 776 pound steers at $170. Both of those would be premium quotes there, and, and those cattle were indeed all natural, but really good sale there in Burwell, Nebraska. A couple of individual quotes. How about Eastern Missouri Commission Company, the Angel family there, uh, and Bowling Green, Missouri. 66 head, 738-pound steers, bring $166 right there on the Illinois line. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Friday your Rao Grow top quote for the day come out of St. Ange Livestock. That's Justin Tupper sale. St. Ange, South Dakota. 81 head, 643 pound steers. Bring 192.50. That's your feeder flash for Monday.